Welcome again to Inside the Line, Real Stories by Real Cops. I'm Dave Radican, alongside Dale Lawrence, retired police officer. We can be reached at uh, insidetheline.org. That's our website. Real Stories by Real Cops at gmail.com is our email address. Uh, feel free to email us anything. If it says something nice about me, I will never see it because Dale gets them first and he's he's jealous. Uh, we've got our, our a podcast that looks forward to to 2022 and i think dale we can agree that everybody is as glad to get rid of 2021 as we were to get rid of oh absolutely what a horror show and and very very much magnified in the lauren in the uh, law enforcement field just a lot of violence a lot of crime a lot of death all throughout the country terrible absolutely Terrible. So that's Not why that's why we're going to make predictions. And here's the thing about 2020: <laughs> what everyone was saying in 2020, at the end of 2020, is thank goodness this is over. It can't get worse. And did it? Oh, it, it got incredibly worse. worse. Violent yeah. crime is yeah. what we're pretty much going to focus because on because we today. opened. You know what happened? We we got out of quarantine, and the violent crime started again. Oh, everyone had shootings. everyone's hormones were all wound up. All the criminals hormones. hadn't killed gonna, someone in a couple of years. <laughs> it's gotta be the stabbers hadn't stabbed anyone. Okay, kill the rapists hadn't raped anyone. Killers gotta kill, man. <laughs> yeah, you gotta kill to stay alive, baby. <laughs> Killers gotta kill. So before we start though with our predictions, so we got predictions to tell you if you're a listener what to expect in twenty. 2022 and we had five predictions each and uh, we're going to get to that in just a second but first i want to just say our, our best goes out to our good friend frankie bravo member of uh law enforcement in massachusetts been on the on the show as a guest and he's a, a frequent listener suffered a heart attack unfortunately before and he's recovering at mass general and uh, we're wishing him the best frankie suffered a um Frankie's wife, a few years ago, she had a quadruple oh, bypass because really? she had a heart attack, and Frankie uh, vowed one upper. <laughs> so he had a quintuple. Oh, really? Yeah. So he had a quintru- quint- quintuple, quint- whatever. He had a bigger bypass than yeah. she had. And so Dale and I, we want you to know, we'll be working on our sextuple bypass uh, as soon as we can, and we're going to start by eating some salty, fatty food from here until at least the end of the year. I want to have my wife fry up some um, ribs. Nothing more healthier than a nice fried rib covered in (laughs) fat and sugar. (laughs) Perfect. Perfect. Uh, Anyway, best wishes and thoughts and prayers and all that to to Frankie. And I got a funny story. I think you'll appreciate this, Dale. He's going into uh, arrest and he's in his, and he's in, he's in the hospital and he goes into whatever the stage is that you pass out just before you flatline. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I have no medical training at all other than what they taught me as a police officer. Okay. And that's the bare minimum. Okay. We only save people we like. Well, we've seen, <laughs> <laughs> we've seen enough television to know that once they go into, uh, once they, once they flatline, that's bad. Yep. And before that, that's bad. Yeah. It because- might be ventricular fibrillation. I think it's when your heart just kind of flutters. It could be. He told me the term. And I, your heart I, flutters. I, I, I forgot it. But he, he said usually when people go through this, when they hit that stage, which is the stage before, uh, he said they pass out. He went into that stage, but he didn't pass out. Now, he's in the hospital. He's, he's hooked up to a defibrillator. Yep. He's, he's hooked up to the defibrillator in his hospital bed, and he's gone into this pre flatline state so they're gonna they're gonna basically defibrillate him yep but he's awake oh really so the nurse so the so the nurse is like i'm really sorry zap oh wow <laughs> i'm really sorry about this it must zap. hurt it must have oh, yeah. electric oh, shock it yeah. was nasty it was nasty so it's one of those things that's a great story afterwards particularly if you're not the guy <laughs> <laughs> who had it done oh, yeah. to him. Yeah, that's scary. I'm glad to hear he's doing better. He's doing, doing better. better. He's doing better. He's hanging in. Uh, he's got a ways to go, but uh, he also got a helicopter ride out of the deal. Oh, MedFlight. Uh, yeah. I knew a guy who worked for MedFlight. Yeah. He worked in my police department. He still does. Well, unfortunately. Med's a great guy. He's a very, very intelligent, top-notch medical care. You can't get any better better medical care than a med flight paramedic. Well, here's what, here's the bad, the, the bad side of it for Frankie. He always wanted to take a helicopter ride and he finally got one, but he was asleep. Oh, there you go. Or sedated. <laughs> Maybe he was sedated. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're wishing our best for Frankie. Uh, hang in there, buddy. 
and we hope to see you soon. Now, let's go into our predictions. Uh, we've got five apiece that we'll go into, and we'll talk about them. Dale, you can go. You can go. Why don't you give one, and then we'll kind of go back and forth. Right. I'm going to set the tone just to let you know where this podcast is going. My first prediction, seeing as though this country's slowly inching its way toward the uh, communist regimes of dun, dun. Russia and China, dun, 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 a dun. prominent journalist in this country will be assassinated. A prominent journalist. A prominent journalist. It's funny because I know when we talked about it before, you were saying it'll be a proper prominent journalist. Like, who was the guy you said? I, even, I love the guy. I watch him every night. Fox News, <laughs> Tucker Carlson. He is just, he's the most um, prominent journalist out there yeah. who is going against the way the country's moving right now, which in his opinion and in many people's opinion is a bad direction, but we're not in politics here. I'm just calling it the way yeah. I see it. I'll say this. The problem that I have is the word journalist. As you know, Fox News uh, defended a lawsuit earlier this year by saying that Tucker Carlson was not a journalist and anybody who watched his show would not go in thinking that anything he reported was an accurate piece of journal or, or was, was actually uh, journalism. And it was just opinion, but I think you're. I think you're. You're right because this is a trend. I mean, it's. It, you're right that it could happen because these guys, Alex Jones, who's further, who's further in the in the Gonzo area, in my opinion, than uh, than Tucker, Rachel Maddow on the other side. Any of these people, they're they're lightning rods. It's what they and, do in Moscow. You go against the government, and you're a journalist or or a uh, or an author. You just come up missing. Same thing in China, Central American so you, countries. Oh, you th so you think it's going to be, but do you think it's going to be, I see, I, I could see them being, I could see somebody being attacked or even killed by a crazy uh, wacko on the left, yeah, oh, uh, wacko on the right. Do I, I think it's a, a government hit? Yeah. No, I would say not. I would say it's probably a crazy wacko okay. who, you know, is just kind of on his own. He's kind of a lone wolf. Yeah. Cra crazy wacko is is right. By the way, I haven't seen Nathan Arroyo in a while. Who Nathan? Our, our guest, yeah. But yeah, Nathan. We gave Nathan the day off. Oh, good, good. Thank goodness. <laughs> He's probably filled up from from Christmas, <laughs> from all that popcorn and string. All right, here's here are mine. I got I got two, and the reason I, I got two is because they're a little bit linked. Support for police rebounds. It took over a year, probably what two about two years, but finally, some people are admitting. That quote unquote defund the police is stupid. It's the most both. outrageous concept they've ever come out and it, up and with. It is both in practice and in slo as a slogan. Oh, because absolutely. even when they kind of walked back the rhetoric, it, the idea of, I mean, basically it says, it, it's really what it is, is let's, let's just throw more money at our problems. What you, it's, at, like, at, it's like a zoo. If, you, if the zookeeper doesn't show up for the day and feed the animals, guess what the animals are going to do? <laughs> They're going to eat each other. If the cops don't show up, all the animals out in the street are going to jump, get out of their cages, and they're going to attack people, whether it be people from their own bad neighborhood or they're going to branch out into the nice middle-class suburbia uh, and start victimizing them. That's terrible. what happens. That would be horrible. I, uh, so in, in, in uh, 2022, my prediction is the pendulum swings the other way and police can go back to cracking skulls and taking names. There you go. That's what we are. Cops yeah. are human zookeepers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe not cracking skulls, but definitely taking, uh, taking names. And this, this links to my other one, which is homicide rates, which we talked about recently. Climbing, which, is re which was re interesting at the time because we had heard the crime, the, the crime stats overall were down, down, down during the pandemic. And now homicide rates went up, up, up. Yeah, up. violent crime is going through the roof, whereas petty crimes like larcenies and maybe car breaks and kind of nuisance crimes have gone down. So I'm seeing a six year, I'm predicting a, a six month, six year, six month, six month climb for homicide rates because you can never have enough of a good thing. <laughs> We're kind of hoping Chicago just hits a thousand, get rid, get rid of all the bad blood out there. That's a good point. If you get rid of all those bad people, oh yeah, then only good people. Because ultimately, will be one of those ultimately, no one cares when criminals kill criminals, but when criminals kill innocent school children, yeah. mom and dad at the yeah. park, mom and dad at the movie theater, little Jimmy walking to 
class in his, you know, off the university, going to his dorm or whatever he's doing, right. and some thug kills him. That's when people care. That's when the money goes back into law enforcement. Right, and that's what's going. This is my, and that's my what's my happening. Is, my prediction is it's going to get worse, and then it's going to swing, and it's going to get better. Because uh, nothing tells you that you're living in a bad neighborhood more than gunshots and dead bodies and blood all over the place. <laughs> so this is going to call, there's going to be, a, again, the snowball, to, to use that analogy, the snowball will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and there'll be a call for better policing and more support for police. Policing is, policing is fine. You know what I, I look at cops as? Cops are the ultimate domestic violence victim. Domestic violence victims and cops share the same thing. Cops and domestic violence victims both get verbally abused. Okay. They get emotionally abused. They get physically abused. They get shot. They get stabbed. They get beat up. And sometimes they get killed. And guess what domestic violence victims do? They go back to the abuser. Guess what <laughs> cops do? They go back to the abuser, which is society. Well, they don't cops go, are very resilient. But they don't go back to society and start, well, let's put it this way. I, I, I like that. That's actually well, I, good. I, I thought about that. It took me about That's an hour good. to figure that one I, out. I bet it did. I was laying in my <laughs> bed after I smoked a joint, and I said, this is a good idea. Cops and domestic violence victims are one and the same. And how often is it that domestic violence uh, victims go back to They go back. Society. The majority of oh, no, no, okay. no. They go back yeah. to the society and they shoot them. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> they should the, be doing that. That's where cops have an advantage. I know. Yeah, cops. Yeah, I, yeah. I think though that the uh, I don't I don't know that burning bed thing. You know, it's funny we didn't have a. I thought when that burning bed movie came up, we'd have just a whole bunch of those across the country. Remember the burning yeah, bed absolutely, movie? Yep. Now let me ask you this question: You're a married guy. Yep. You slept with one eye open for a while, didn't you? Usually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just never know when she's going to douse you with kerosene. You never know kerosene. when she's going to douse me with some gasoline and a match. <laughs> All right, so you got a couple uh, You got a couple predictions, Dale? Yeah, I think this is a real easy one, and I say it's a real easy one because the federal government, okay, the feds have already said to local cities and towns that parents, irate parents, in school board meetings are the new domestic terrorists. I think there's going to be an active shooter situation at a school board meeting where a parent in the crowd is going to shoot right in front of them, right at the school board, whether it be the superintendent or any other school board personnel. Because what's happening is parents are teaching values at home. Yep. Schools, teachers, maybe individually, it might not be a, a concerted effort by an entire school system, but individual teachers are going rogue. They're teaching whatever they want to teach, critical race theory or anything else they want to teach. Parents are upset about it. Parents are trying to go to these school board meetings and voice their opinion. Yep. They're being shut down. They're being intimidated. Law enforcement's there, and they can't get their voice across. A parent is no different than a kid that gets bullied in high school and a worker who gets bullied at work. These parents are getting bullied and intimidated at these school board meetings. There will be an active shooter situation where a parent will kill at least one school board member at a meeting. That's that's horrible to think about. I will just flip. I'll, I'll just give you the other side of okay. that scenario. Because you, you're a teacher. Yeah. What do you think? The, 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 how about this? The teacher. Teach, and I, I, I get it. I get the dynamic. And I get where you're coming from, but I can also flip it and say there've been studies that have, have or, or there've been surveys that have gone out to to parents and said, you know, should we teach this? Should we teach this? Should we teach this? And these parents are coming coming back at them with answers that indicate a lack of education and knowledge of subject matter. Oh, so the parents are, are, are illiterate too, and I they have no clue of, what's going on. Well, I think that the whole <laughs> idea that we, we exist in a world without facts and without without yeah, in a, in a, in a world without truth. We run the risk of my opinion about policing being just as strong as your opinion about police, or yep. just as correct as your. And uh, you know, I, I I used to deal all the time with people in public health, and I'll get people who you know, I, I'm I'm not yeah, I, you know, I've, I've I get into an argument with a carpenter recently, who told me that my ideas were stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's like, okay, I guess they are. Uh, but, you know, that's what I'm saying. I mean, we, we exist in a world where the experts don't matter anymore. No, it doesn't matter. And when matter. the experts no. don't matter. And then in, with schools, unfortunately, you've got an attitude from 
the schools that often comes across as being